G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video I'm going to show you how to retrieve all the emails that are currently being used in Journey Builder in Salesforce Marketing Cloud using some SQL. So I'm sure that some of you have had this problem before. We have to try and retrieve a list of all the emails that are currently being used in Journey Builder. Well, luckily for us, the Marketing Cloud data views give us a way to look this up ourselves using SQL. We'll start off today in my Marketing Cloud data view diagram. We'll put a link to this in the description below. If we have a look down the bottom here at our journey and journey activity tables, we can see that the underscore journey table gives us a view of every single journey and its version. Version ID links back to our journey activity table, that is every activity in every journey, which we can then link using the journey activity object ID. The great thing is that that field actually links back to the triggered send definition object ID, which luckily also links back to our send and job tables. And particularly, the job table has our email name and email subject line, which means we can return back the email's name. And if we want to, we can also link back on the sent data view to return how many sends have occurred recently as well. So with that in mind, let's go and do two things. First, make a data extension with the fields we want to retrieve. And second of all, make some SQL to populate it. So let's start by making our data extension. So I'll go create, make a new data extension. I'll call this one all emails in JB and we'll go next. Now what fields you want to return back for our query here today? Well, first and foremost, probably gonna be our email name. So let's find our email name, there it is there. And we'll choose email name. I'll put that as my first field, making sure it's nice and long. Now next, we should probably bring back as well is gonna be the activity name. What's it called in the journey builder activities? It's down here as activity name. So I'll bring that field back as well, again, nice and long. We should also probably bring back some more fields like the journey it's in, maybe journey name, that's what we want to bring in. Might also be worth bringing back more than the journey name, maybe also the journey version. So what's the journey's version ID? We've got here journey version number, good, we'll use that one there, version number. I'll put version number in, I believe it's a number field, so I'll use number. Now probably a good idea too is to use the status of the journey because some journeys will be deleted or deactivated. So make sure they bring in our journey status field. There it is there, it's a text 100. And so I'll bring in journey status, text at least 100, perfect. Now make these all nullable. You know, for good measure, let's bring one more field in. Let's bring back how many sends the emails had in the last 90 days, we'll say. So it will go sends uh, last 90 days. There we are. It's of course gonna be a number and we'll make that nullable as well. So here's our data extension to populate our fields into. Let's go create. All right, now we can jump into Automation Studio and make our SQL. Okay, so over in Automation Studio, let's jump into our overview tab and click on a new automation. Call this one my emails in JB automation. Use a schedule starting source so we can use our run once feature. Then we'll drag in a SQL activity, choosing to create a new SQL query activity. This one's gonna be our all emails in JB activity and we'll choose next. Now a quick tip when it comes to loading in data extension fields is to go and navigate to your data extension target and drag and drop in the data extension into your query, then populates all the field names that you have to populate. So as easy as that, I've now got all my field names ready to go. So I'll quickly format up my field names just like that and we are now ready to go. So my first step is to write out our main select statement. We are going to be selecting these values from what? Now I'm gonna make a nested query to make things easy. So I'll say from, and what we're we gonna choose from? Well, first of all, we have to pick up all the email activities in all of our journeys. So probably gonna be our journey activity table. So let's choose our journey activity and choose activity there. Copy the name in and we'll say from, select some stuff from that table, perfect. Now what fields do we want from journey activity? Well, if we have a quick look, we're gonna to want to get the activity name, that's for sure, so we'll grab that one. Probably gonna to wanna to get some information we need to match back onto our journeys as well, so the version ID, so I'll need that, we'll get version ID. All right, after that, we're probably gonna need the matching element as well, our journey activity object ID to match back on the triggered send definition, so we'll need that as well. Perfect, and then we'll probably also need to make sure we filter on the correct activity IDs as well. So make sure we use our activity type field. So let's bring that in just in case and put that down there. So we're gonna choose all the activities from that table 
where our activity type ID is going to be like what? Well, it's going to be an email, so we're going to say it's like an email. Any activity types that are like email, bring them into this list. Perfect. So with that done, that is our journey activity table. Now, after we have our journey activities, we have to bring in some more fields as well. We want to link this now down to our journey to get back the journey name. So we'll reference our underscore journey data view. Go into the animation, and we're going to choose a left join. I'm going to join in our select stuff from our journey table. Now, what stuff do we want to bring in for this one? Well, we're going to want to bring in, of course, the version ID, so we can link those together. So bring in our version ID. We don't want to bring in our version or our name of our journey, since we do have the journey name in our output. So pick up journey name and put that in. We've also got the journey status, so I'll bring that one in there as well. And after that, is there anything else we can bring in from the journey table? Probably version number as well, so we can see what version number of the journey we have. That'd be a good one to have. So down and version number. Perfect. That's going to be our journeys that we bring in. And we have to link this now as table J for journeys, linking on what? Well, we know from our table diagram here, the version ID links to version ID. So I'll say where or on j.versionID is going to be equal to the journey activity version ID. Perfect. So now we have our journey activities and our journey tables linked in. But we also need our job and send tables as well to bring in the email name and also the sends last 90 days. So for our next join, we'll say left join. This time we're going to join on our jobs table. So we'll say select things from and from our jobs table. So we'll scroll up to the top here and get our job table, underscore job from job. Now, what fields do you want from the job table? Well, if we have a quick look, we're probably going to want to get the email name. So I'll bring that one in there, email name. Probably going to want to have the linking field as well. So we do know it's going to be a job ID field just in case. So I'll bring that in as well. And for good measure, we also have to bring in that triggered send definition object ID. There it is there, which links on to our journey activity object ID. So I need to bring that one in too. Object ID and paste. Okay, anything else from our email? I think that should do it. That's going to be from our job table. And now this left join is going to be our job table. And it's going to be linking on what? How does our job table link into the rest? Well, lucky for us, our job table, which is this one here, links in on the triggered send definition object ID relates to journey activity object ID. Perfect. So I can use those two values. So I've got my job job dot send definition object ID relates to journey activity ID which I called equals JA activity ID perfect there's one more table to bring in which is our sent for our last 90 days so our final join will then say left join once more we're going to be bringing in what well we're going to be selecting some things from our sent table. So let's scroll up to our sent table and pick up our sent. There it is there. Sent from sent. I'm going to pick up what values. Well, we're probably going to want to get the count of emails that were sent. So first thing I'll do is I'll say I want to count all of those emails and count this as, and I'll call it the same as my field name, my send last 90 days. So I'll call it my send last 90 days. We also want to bring in, of course, the ID, which you have to match back onto, which would be our triggered send definition ID. So we'll check that out for ourselves. The sent table on triggered send definition ID. Perfect. So I bring that value in, and that's my first field there, and our count. And with the count, it's a group by function. So we have to write some more code below our from statement. So we have to say it's going to be, first of all, where our date function. Now, what date do we have in our sent table? Well, our sent table has the event date field as a date field. Great. So I'll use event date. So where the event date is what? Well, the event date has been the last 90 days. So we'll say it's greater than, and we'll get today's date with get date. And it's get date minus 90 days. So as long as the send date is greater than today minus 90 days. So in the last 90 days. Perfect. Well, that's true. And then we're going to group by 
and group by what? To make our count work, we have to group by the send definition object ID. Just like that. Now that's our send table, which I'm going to call S. And our send table is going to link on what? So back to our send table. Well, it links back on the send definition object ID back onto, you guessed it, our journey activity ID. So we're going to use our send definition ID on S dot definition ID is equal to our journey activity object ID. All right, and that should be all of it. Now let's match up our field names. The activity name is coming from our journey activity. So JA dot activity name. The journey name comes from our journey table. So it's going to be J dot. The version number is also J dot for journey. The status is also J dot for journey. And then we want to bring in what? Well, our sends last 90 days is going to be coming from our uh, send table, so S dot. And of course, email name is coming from our job table, which is job dot. All right, let's now check it out with our syntax. Perfect, green light. So we'll go next. Let's now plug this in as an overwrite function to our data extension that we've built. There it is, all emails in JB, next. Looking good, looking good, and finish. So that done, let's now go ahead and we'll run this activity by saving our automation and choosing run once. All right, the automation is now run in just eight seconds. How good's that? So let's jump back into our data extensions and check it out. I'll refresh my data extension table and hopefully 27 records, all right. So let's check it out and see what we have. In our records tab, this should be all the emails that are coming through. Now there's one thing it looks like we haven't done, which is I can see some duplicates here. All right, so one more thing to add back in our query here is to make sure we do actually remove those duplicates. So let's go back into our query and we'll add the word in distinct. Distinct is gonna dedupe our records uh, based on these fields. So any duplicates will get rolled up and removed. So next and finish. And with that corrected, let's now save our automation and rerun it one more time. Hopefully with a few less records as there'll be no more dupes. So select all and run. And let's see how it goes. So we'll refresh our activity and again, just a few seconds later. So we had 27 records to start with. Let's now jump back into our folder and now the 17. All right, duplicates removed. So hopefully if we now check out our records, we'll see all the emails that we've sent so far. So straight away, there's a few activities that no longer have emails attached to them. Good to know, those emails must be deleted. The journey status, of course, is deleted for those journeys as well. They don't exist. But I do see a few other emails that exist in some stopped activities. So if these newer versions were to recommence, then these emails might get republished. Good to know. Further, I also have my sent last 90 days and straight away I can see that some of my emails were sent uh, on some previous sends. So my new lead email, I can see that my welcome email one and welcome email two have been sent in the last 90 days. Fantastic. So if you have this problem or you want to try it out for yourself, then here is the data extension that you can build for yourself with all the data types, lengths, and nullable fields. I've also put the SQL code on my GitHub. I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. As you can see, the code that we've run today will return back those values, showing you all the emails that exist in all your current journeys, as well as the total sends in the last 90 days. I hope you find this SQL walkthrough useful. If you have, please let me know in the comments below and give the video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.